Fallout took the world by storm in 1997 and never let go, launching a series that has captivated gamers for nearly 20 years and counting. From iconic visuals and gameplay such as the VAT system to the demented history of vault -Tec, the apocalypse has never been so enticing, and we're here to check it all out. Hey, I'm Jacob with the leaderboard, and it's time to slap on your Pip-Boy because this is Then vs. Now, Fallout Edition. <laughs> Passing the post-nuclear baton. The original 1997 Fallout game and its 1998 sequel were both developed by Black Isle Studios, which was a studio owned under Interplay Productions. Interplay was an American-based production company that was also responsible for producing Baldur's Gate. Although both Fallout and Baldur's Gate were financial and critical successes, Interplay eventually faced bankruptcy in 2005. A couple years later, in 2007, they sold the Fallout IP to Bethesda Softworks. Black Isle was actually in the process of developing Fallout 3 during the transition, but since the game wasn't finished, the rights to develop and produce Fallout 3 were sold to Bethesda as well. Bethesda's Fallout 3 was made from the ground up, with the developer using their RPG expertise honed from developing The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, another popular first-person RPG. Tim Kaine, the game director for the first two Fallouts, commented that he admired the art direction in the game. Bethesda showed themselves to be true fans of the series, as Kane noted the intricate attention to detail that the developer paid to the series he helped create. Other veteran Fallout developers also sounded off in praise of the new game. Chris Avalone, the main writer of Fallout 2 lauded the immersion of this newly realized Fallout and was impressed by the amount of tools at his disposal. These features ensured that he would have fun no matter what the challenges. While Bethesda did receive some fan backlash, particularly in areas of the game's writing and storytelling, both critically and financially, this new Fallout was a success. Sites like Kotaku and IGN gave the game positive reviews, noting its open-ended gameplay and high level of interactivity. When all was said and done, it looked as though Fallout made a change for the best, opening itself up to a wealth of new and old players alike. With a new developer came a fresh new face for the series, but this wasn't the last time Fallout would change hands. In 2010, Fallout New Vegas landed on consoles and PC alike, but while Bethesda Game Studios was toiling away at Skyrim and Fallout 4, a new developer came to the fold. Obsidian Entertainment took the radiated reins from Bethesda Game Studios and developed a new Fallout game that takes place in the former city of Las Vegas, now dubbed New Vegas. Ironically enough, in 2009, Obsidian was contacted by EA to produce an RPG to compete with Bethesda's Oblivion. Years later, Later, the developer would be working for said competition. Obsidian developed the sequel to one of the original Xbox's hit RPGs, Knights of the Old Republic. That sequel, Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords, showcased the developer's talents in creating a polished RPG in an established franchise, a skill that no doubt qualified them to develop New Vegas. New Vegas didn't take as big of a leap that Fallout 2 did to 3, but it did polish, improve, and add on some new features to the game that provides the players with a more streamlined Fallout experience. Character creation, something that would take a long time in Fallout 3 was made more efficient by allowing players to skip tutorials and get to the wasteland with more immediacy. Greater customization options were available with new perks and even a new skill called Survival. This skill affects how much health is restored by eating or drinking in the game. New weapons such as the single shotgun, dynamite, and grenade launcher help make the game feel like a true expansion to Fallout 3, while still not the full-blown sequel Fallout 4 would be. Good old-fashioned war. Getting its namesake from the radioactive fallout of nuclear bombs, the setting and story of the series has always been centered on war, specifically mutually assured destruction through World War. And while war never changes, each game in the series tackles this concept in their own unique way. The original Fallout landed in 1997 and hit the PC scene hard with its gritty, war-torn setting of a post-nuclear America. In Fallout 1, the game takes place in the year 2161, approximately 84 years after a global nuclear war has wiped out most life on Earth. Those who did survive the battles have taken shelter in underground bunkers called vaults. The premise of Fallout 1 has players looking for a way to save their own vault, Vault 13, by going out, exploring the wasteland, and taking down any enemies along the way. Interplay followed up the popular PC title with 1998's Fallout 2. Capitalizing on the irradiated momentum of the first game, Fallout 2 took place in 2241, 80 years after the events of the first game. Players assume the role of a direct descendant of the character from the first Fallout and are tasked with finding a way to end their village's drought. Referred to as the Chosen One, players once again found themselves in the sprawling wasteland searching for a machine, the Gek, to restore water water to their ancient village. The game was praised for greatly expanding upon the story of the first Fallout while keeping what worked well in the original, like gameplay and graphics, the same. Fallout 3 changes the setting of the story somewhat in that players have more time to experience what growing up inside a vault would be like. The game also makes the wasteland really fun to explore, placing hidden vaults and stores to pillage and towns to blow up, rip megaton, tenpenny tower was too nice to turn down. The feeling of seeing the wasteland in all its horrific glory after being cooped up in the vault so long allows the players to feel what their characters 
character was feeling as well. It was this immersive gameplay that differentiated this iteration of the game from its predecessors. Set about four years after the events of Fallout 3, 2010's New Vegas granted players a chance to explore a new area of the United States. Players took on the role of a courier for the Mojave Express Company. Tasked with delivering a package called the Platinum Chip, they're quickly assaulted by a man named Benny who steals the chip and leaves the player for dead. After a rescue at the hands of a Securitron, the courier then sets off to confront Benny, meeting and helping various people along the way. Vegas isn't the only locale players will visit, as the game takes place in the expansive Mojave Wasteland, which includes Nevada as well as California and Arizona. Fallout 4 also has an interesting twist on the nuclear story. The fourth numbered entry in the series has players beginning the game on the fatal day of the bomb drop. Whereas previous games have taken place years after the nuclear war that wiped out civilization on Earth, Fallout 4 has players live through that day. All the fear, uncertainty, and anxiety is palpable as players are ushered into a vault while other people are turned away. It's a bittersweet start to the game, and while it retains its retro war charms of the predecessors, it does an excellent job at setting the tragic tone of the game. A change in perspective. The most apparent change to the Fallout series came in how the game looked and played. Fallout 1 landed in 1997 and hit the PC world hard with its post-nuclear isometric 2D gameplay. As mentioned, the game took place in Southern California in the far future of 2161, 84 years after a global nuclear war wipes away most life on the planet. The original Fallout 1 and 2 are both RPGs where gameplay mostly consisted of wandering around the wasteland, chatting with its local inhabitants, and helping them solve their problems for experience points. These games have the camera in a top-down perspective, occasionally changing when you would talk to various wasteland inhabitants. This largely changed with the release of Fallout 3 in 2008. Fallout 3 and its subsequent releases, Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4, are both in the first-person perspective. Players also have the option to switch to a third-person camera option as well. A result of this change meant gameplay would widely differ from the original games as well. In Fallout 1 and 2, combat is turn-based. This combat is centered on an action-based system. Players are given a number of actions that they could use with the maximum number of actions being affected by your perks. Your character can have a maximum of two weapons equipped while being able to switch between them during combat. Players and enemies take turns in combat, though attributes like perception allow players to increase the amount of turns or action points that they get and puts them in a higher place in turn rotation. The top-down perspective allows players and combatants to move across the battlefield almost as if it were a board game. Once Fallout transitioned over to Bethesda, gameplay took a significant step in another direction. Fallout 3 introduced the VATS system, which stands for the Vault Tech Assisted Targeting System. This system plays to the advantage of the new first-person perspective while still allowing players to retain the feel of the turn-based combat from the original games. The system was introduced by Bethesda as a blend of real-time combat with turn-based combat. Combat can take place in real-time with players trading shots with enemies, however, using VATS freezes the combatants and the players allowed to strategically choose where to hit their opponent. Being able to target specific body parts means applying different effects based on what's being targeted. Players going in for a quick kill can target the head, though the hit percentage would be lower than when targeting something larger like the torso. Dealing damage to a heavily armored torso would mean a much lower damage output. Targeting the legs could mean slowing your enemy down and so on. Using VATS requires spending action points, with points increasing or decreasing depending on the weapon being used. Planning what gun you're going to use is just as key as choosing where you're going to use it. The VATS system adds a unique layer of strategy to the series that, while already there in certain parts, isn't fully possible in the isometric landscape of Fallout 1 and 2. A very special apocalypse. Character customization has always been a staple to the Fallout series. Fallout 1 allows players to choose from three pre-made characters, Albert, Natalia, and Max. Each of the characters has their own strengths and weaknesses that aid players along their journey outside the vault. You can also create your own character from scratch, but both the pre-made characters and your custom characters have attributes that could be upgraded with the special system. The acronym stands for Strength, Perception, Endurance, Charisma, Intelligence, Agility, and Luck. This system was designed specifically for the Fallout series, but is featured in every iteration of the game. While the special acronym never changed, how it affects gameplay differs from game to game. Upgrading your character in Fallout 1 and 2 falls into four categories. Skills, perks, attributes, and traits. The special attributes affect gameplay according to their description. As we mentioned before, the perception attribute affects how soon your turn is in combat, as well as the maximum range of guns. Charisma affects conversations with NPCs and so on. Skills and traits also affect gameplay and are awarded through leveling up. Character customization was done on the Pip-Boy 2000 personal computing device that features the famous Vault Boy. Fallout 3 retained the special system, but it has a vastly different tutorial from either of its previous games. Upon starting Fallout 3, players find themselves playing as a baby of their custom character growing up in Vault 101. The tutorial has players living out the toddler, child, and adolescent years of their character's life before they're able to start up the main game. Each of the game's mechanics are taught in steps, with players eventually getting to customize their character using the special system from the previous games. This and other character customization features are done on the Pip 
Pip-Boy 3000, the new and improved version of the Pip-Boy from Fallout 1 and 2. Skills are also taken care of during the tutorial. During the tutorial in Vault 101, the player is asked a series of questions that determines the three skills they'll have at the start of the game. Skills can also be manually chosen as well. While Fallout 3 does hold on to the special system, it's hard to argue the increased level of immersion that their tutorial brought to the Fallout series. Fallout 4 takes the customization and immersion one step further by allowing players to construct new buildings and settlements. Using in-game objects, players can find open patches of land and build their own structures there, eventually expanding their small rusted fort to a fully fledged base. These settlements could be inhabited by NPCs, though the player would have to provide food, water, and power for them to stay. This adds a new level of gameplay for players who want to fully live in Fallout 4's nuclear nightmare. Do you want to? And that's a wrap on the ways of the wasteland. Once again, I'm Jacob, and thanks for joining us for Then Versus Now on the Fallout series. Are there any Fallout games you'd like to learn more about? Which series would you like to see another Then Versus Now about? Sound off in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to become part of our notification squad, and if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for video game facts.